Hello and welcome to 2024 Kansas City Chiefs team preview. You're back-to-back reigning defending Super Bowl champs. Patrick Mahomes, hopefully getting back to being a fantasy superstar. Isaiah Pacheco seems too cheap for a likely workhorse running back. Brand new wide receiver room, but Travis Kelsey remains. All that and so much more. Give us 30 minutes. We'll get you caught up on everything there is to know about your Kansas City Chiefs. I'm Ian Hart. It's welcome to the Fantasy Life Show. And joining me, as always, is none other than Fantasy Life Director of Analytics and all-around rock star, Dwayne The Rock McFarlane. And Dwayne, again, job got done last year, held up the Lombardi Trophy. Everything was fine, but wasn't exactly the usual just juggernaut offense we were used to seeing out of Kansas City and even Patrick Mahomes, which accordingly led to a bit less fantasy production than we're used to seeing. Yeah, man. Uh, That's what happens when you have Justin Watson... Sky Moore, Marquez Valdez, Scantling, all these guys leading your room. And you've got Travis Kelsey dealing with injuries. Remember last year to start the season, we had Kelsey miss week one against Detroit. You know, he'd gotten injured late in the preseason. So I look at what's happened for, you know, the Chiefs. And I know we'll get more into the wide receivers and stuff uh, here in a minute. But Kansas City went out of their way to re-fortify, you know, this offense. Now, Rasheed Rice did emerge at the end of last year. We'll see what happens with that suspension. But then you go at Hollywood Brown, you know, who is an outside vertical threat that's much better than Marquise Valdez-Scanling. Also a guy that's shown us that he can earn targets, you know, at the intermediate and short levels. And then you also talk about the first round draft pick. You know, speed kills, Ian. That's what John Madden used to say anyway whenever I watched him and Pat Summerall back in the day. He said it about Raheem Ishmael once. It lasted like Ooh, one game. Rocket. Against, uh, Washington. The Rocket. Uh, when the Cowboys had gotten him from the Carolina Panthers. But, yeah, looking at, uh, you know, where was I even going with that? Xavier Worthy. <laughs> That's where I was going. Uh, you know, the speedster that broke the 40 combine time. And, guys, it shows up on the film, too. I know sometimes we look at these times, we're like, oh, my God, what are we talking about here? No, this is a guy that uh, showed he had rockets on the field. So, looking at Mahomes, I mean, I don't know what your thoughts are, but I, I feel like this is going to be the best offense we've seen from him since the Cheetah left. Um, I, 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 do, I do have some concerns about Kelsey we'll get into, but overall, like, I, I don't think like the end is here for Kelsey. No, absolutely not. And just regarding the, you know, Mahomes since the cheetah left. I mean, in 2022, he averaged 24.5 fantasy points. Which was per wild. Game, which is wild. Yeah. I mean, look, not quite at 2018 or 2020 heights, but yeah, we'll take that eight days of the week. Last year it was the drop off, just 17.5 finished as the QB twelve. So again, you know, you guys remember the MBS drop against the Eagles, some of the Sky Moore miscues against the Broncos. Like, you know, I'm not quite sure if his uh, you know, missed opportunity touchdown highlight tape would be as as Trevor Lawrence's, but certainly up there with more quarterbacks than not in the league. So still, despite that, number one all time in career fantasy points per game. And accordingly, Dwayne, you know, depending on your site, he is a bit more affordable than ever. Yeah. Sadly, not so much, you know, in redraft land. The ESPN and Yahoo faithful are not fooled by the down uh, 2023 season, Dwayne. He is still and going good for them. Inside. They shouldn't be, Ian. We, we like to give them a lot of crap, Dwayne, but I think I'm the homes figured out. He is being ranked right now inside the top 30 QBs. I'm going to have a hard time taking him over Jalen Hurts, probably even Lamar Jackson. But when we can get him round four, round five, and some of these other formats, that's where I'm signing up. And that's a big reason why he's my third most drafted quarterback of the offseason. Yeah, man. Once you there, There's a spot that you get to in your drafts where it just kind of becomes, why am I considering this player over Patrick Mahomes? Yeah. Like, like <laughs> why, why don't I just go ahead and take Patrick Mahomes? And the way things set up, like if you're if you're wanting to get multiple pieces from that offense, you can. Now I, I get it; that's a best ball strategy. But guys, when you have an offense like the Chiefs, it's a good strategy anywhere. You know, if you can have multiple Chiefs on your team, I think that's going to be a good thing for you. Whether you're playing in a home league on ESPN or wherever you're trying, or whether you're trying to win, you know, a million dollars playing in a best ball draft somewhere else. So yeah, when I look at Mahomes, he's just one of those nice quarterbacks sitting there. When I hit a tear break on some of the other positions, running back, wide receiver, tight end, and I'm like, okay. Like rather than reaching for a wide receiver three here, I'm going to take a QB one that could be the best quarterback in fantasy land again this season. I'm with you. I've got him right now ranked behind Lamar Jackson. I've got it as, you know, Josh Allen, Jalen Hurts, and then Lamar. Mm -hmm. And then I've got Mahomes in in the next tier, like, you know, because he doesn't have the rushing upside those guys have. But we do know that when Mahomes is on his game, it doesn't matter. He he, He still adds a little bit on the ground. He's not like those guys. But he still has what it takes. He's one of the few guys we know that uh, even without that elite rushing upside, he can easily be the QB1 overall. 
Certainly done that plenty of times before. I just hope that, again, some of these new wide receivers bring out the more entertaining version. Again, style points don't count any extra in fantasy football, but literally the lowest ADOT at 6.8 yards. And by ADOT, I mean, of course, average target depth among uh, 30 qualified quarterbacks was at 7.6 or higher from 2018 to 2022. So always funny. You know, I tried to put together some stats from last year that kind of helped show what quarterbacks were being more aggressive than others. And I've seen, um, you know, there's a really good Twitter account, Carter or something. Sorry kind of messing up that shout out but i see a lot of people you know again trying to put this together and you see Mahomes down there at the bottom because of how much they were checking the ball down running screens things of that nature would expect that to be more you know more of a one-year blip on the radar than a sign of things to come but hey again worked out just fine for him last year Dwayne, you mentioned before how yes they got the job done with a banked up version of travis kelsey what a huge panic we all had in the fantasy community there before week one. But he was back before too long. And yes, Sam Laporta ended up taking the overall tight end one crown. But it was still Travis Kelsey leading the way in terms of PPR points per game. And man, if you include the playoffs, we actually saw a 1.5 fantasy points per game gap between him and the next closest tight end. So yes, he will be 35 in October. But I think as we saw in that January and the February stretch, Dwayne, when Kelsey's healthy, he is still more than capable of working as fantasy's most productive tight end. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I did some research really looking at these tight ends as they're aging. And I will have to say, like, there's also some survivorship bias in these things, because yeah. really, I mean, only the best tight ends survive and Kelsey's in the pool of guys. But one of the things that I noticed was for tight ends as they age, something that becomes more and more important is their ability to earn targets against man coverage and also their percentage of the team's man air yards. And those were two areas where Ke last year, Kelsey wasn't quite as strong as he's been historically. But he was still in that range that you would expect from a tight end one. So whenever I look at his production last year, obviously, like you said, towards the end of the year and then getting into the playoffs, he was still great. And that's once, um, you know, Rasheed Rice had really already emerged. You know, yeah. Rasheed Rice for the second half of the season was one of the best fantasy wide receivers that we could put, you know, out there on a week to week basis. And Travis Kelsey was dealing with him getting his targets as well. And so I think that that was a big positive because the one thing that we did wonder about Kelsey was like, OK, great. Like, we know he's still good, but is he great? And if he has a lot more target competition, would that really hurt him? And this year, this is going to be a major influx of target competition. So I do think there's a little bit, you know, there's a little bit more of a question. If these other guys all end up working out, we could see things more spread out. Back in the day, whenever it was him and Tyreek Hill together, neither one of them were getting to the target shares that they're both seeing now, right, apart mm -hmm. from each other on two separate teams. So I think there is a little bit more risk with the age. But the underlying data points still tell us that he's good. And obviously the fantasy points, that's the most predictive thing year over year. They showed us at the end of last year that they're still booming. So for me, Travis Kelsey is my tight end too behind Sam Laporta. So looking at his ADP kind of across the industry, again, if you want to go in best ball land, sometimes you see him falling into round four and even, you know, into the very beginning of round five, but not so much in more typical redraft leagues, still very much a top two round pick over at ESPN and Yahoo. So NFFC, you know, if you guys are into some of the high stakes goodness, that is where he's slipping a bit into that round, you know, four, five turn, or no, I should say end of round three into the early parts of round four. But yeah, Dwayne, certainly more affordable than ever. I mean, wasn't that long ago that Kelsey was, you know, in everyone's conversation as being a legit top 10 pick. So someone that I haven't, I guess, drafted as much as I thought I might just on the surface of, okay, he is, you know, more affordable than ever, but I don't think it's anything against Kelsey Dwayne. It's just more so the Laporta, Kelsey, Andrews, McBride, yeah. Kincaid tier. I tend to just kind of take some of the cheaper options that emerge from that. Yeah. And I, and I mean, the chiefs obviously still believe they gave him a two-year contract worth yep. 34 million. So, <laughs> I mean, not that he needs it anymore. He's got Taylor Swift, so he's got a much bigger bag <laughs> than that. But with Kelsey, the thing that I look at on him, Ian is, you know, I did the study on age as well, comparing these players to their prime. You guys can check out all this stuff for free in the tight end tiers article that I put out last week. I give you all of my methodology for how I rank the, the tight ends. And it also takes ADP and all these things into account, but looking at Kelsey, even if he's at 80% of his prime, that's going to be better than like all tight ends except for like two or three. Yeah. <laughs> so I still feel like he's a decent bet where you're getting him in drafts. I'm with you. I thought maybe I would be clicking on him a little bit more early, early on in drafts. I was, but mm -hmm. he's really tightened up. Uh, you know how far he and Sam Laporta go apart has gotten much closer here over the last several weeks. 
On to the new look wide receiver room that Patrick Mahomes will be thrown to. Again, more than expecting Travis Kelsey to continue being a number one overall pass game option, but some new faces here. Specifically, Hollywood Brown took his talents from Arizona into Kansas City. Just a one-year deal worth up to $11 million. But hey, again, certainly seems like a guy where last time we truly saw him healthy and with Kyler Murray under center, first six weeks of 2022. And yeah, was the overall PPR wide receiver five on pace to rack up over 1300 yards and scored nine touchdowns so shout out to a uh, fancy point scott barrett had a really good stat where last year only aaron jones with seven spent more total games on the injury report listed as questionable than brown who had six so Dwayne, it's one of these things where you know I feel like we've always kind of been expecting the breakout to come for Hollywood. It's not like he's had bad quarterback play over the year with Lamar Lamar Jackson and Kyler Murray, but just always kind of leaves us wanting a little bit more. Do you think we finally unlocked that, you know, potentially tantalizing wide receiver one ceiling here in Kansas City? I'm not sure he gets the wide receiver one ceiling just because, you know, if Rasheed Rice is on the field and we're, we're up in the air on what's going to happen, you know, with the suspension there. I mean, I thought Hayden Winks did a great job breaking this down and putting some odds on it. Like, you know, is it going to be right at the beginning of the season? How long is it going to be? Could it be towards the end of the season? Might he not get suspended at all this year? Possible. And his legal team manages to kick the can down the road and we're dealing with this next season. So there's just such a wide range of outcomes here on Rasheed Rice. But I do believe if Rice and Kelsey are both right, that still probably is making Hollywood the third option in this offense. And he then is having to probably battle Xavier Worthy. If Worthy does great in camp, which he is now healthy, he missed part of OTAs and things with a hamstring, but he's been back out there at the start, you know, of training camp now. There's a there's there's a battle there. But I will say this, like the underlying talent profile for me with Marquise Brown, like based on all the metrics that I really try to look at and look historically what's matter for wide receivers. He is a wide receiver, too. Like, he has the talent to be a wide receiver, too, in fantasy land. He's never quite reached that wide receiver one height that we would hope for. But with the Chiefs, if something were to happen to Kelsey or if Rasheed Rice gets suspended longer than we think, you know, injuries, all sorts of things can happen. There are definitely paths to where if it was suddenly an offense where he was going to be, you know, with less target competition, then the addition of Mahomes could potentially push him into a wide receiver one finish, even though he's a wide receiver two talent. Because, you know, getting targets from Patrick Mahomes is a lot better than getting targets from most other quarterbacks in the league. I think we would all acknowledge that. So I'm looking at him right now as a wide receiver three with upside. Um, But I do think there's an easy path where he finishes up as a wide receiver two. To get to wide receiver one status, obviously he would have to have some things really break his way. PFF does a good job tracking what is a catchable ball and what is not, and their catchable deep ball rate since 2019. Ravens just 31st, Cardinals 15th, Chiefs sitting pretty up there at 7th. So yes, I will say that targets from Patrick Mahomes tend to go a bit further in fantasy land than elsewhere. And Dwayne, you know, like we don't even need to be chasing this Tyreek Hill ceiling. I, I don't think we're going to get there with any of these guys, you know, but even just going back to 2022, I mean, Miko Harbin was the wide receiver 32 and Juju Smith-Schuster was the wide receiver 36 yeah. in terms of PPR points per game He's better and, than both those players by far yeah absolutely yeah. particularly you know just later career juju where you know kind of some of that yak ability <laughs> later career see. juju when he was like 24 I know man <laughs> but it's <laughs> true juju, juju hit the late career uh button really early <laughs> age-wise it's true though man I've been uh throwing on some old games you. as I'm uh writing and I had a uh, Saints Steelers from 2018 ABs last oh, game yeah. there and you just see the way juju used to move man I mean there's a reason why uh you know smart guys in the industry used to think that he was a legit top five top six dynasty wide receiver oh man we'll see uh see if he can you know get things going on the patriots but i pretty much doubt it but all these guys joined pretty freaking affordable you kind of already mentioned the rasheed rice situation and the potential suspension i tend to think we end up somewhere around the four to six games marker but again we've seen guys with alvin kamara you know over the years where it can get pushed back pretty easy xavier worthy obviously got the first round draft capital for a reason some of my comps uh for him after watching a lot of his targets from texas Rich man's Khalif Raymond, who we wanted KJ Hamler to be, Deshaun Jackson with worse ball tracking skills, Will Fuller, pre-shattered finger, and then just overall Sonic the Hedgehog. So very excited about Worthy. And honestly, like you watch him, and I think some of it had to do with Quinn Ewers, not exactly, you know, giving them the best chances on some of those downfield balls. But I was almost more impressed with what he could do as a yak player, you know, in the screen game, which is something the Chiefs like to do more than anyone else. So that is typically Rasheed Rice's job when he is he- when he's healthy and not suspended. 
suspended, but as we know, might not be the case early on. So when everyone is healthy eventually, Dwayne, and out there on the field, I tend to still think it's going to be Rasheed Rice, wide receiver one, Hollywood, wide receiver two, and then Xavier Worthy, wide receiver three. But when all these guys are currently being priced outside the top 30 wide receivers, pretty much wherever you want to look, I'm, I'm buying each a price, honestly. Yeah, I am. I am as well. Um, and yeah, I'm with you, though, on on the pecking order. I think like out of the gate, we do assume Rasheed Rice when on the field is the wide receiver one guy averaged 16.6 fantasy points with a 25 percent target share after taking over the full time role from week 14 through the Super Bowl. Ooh. So, I mean, we've got a pretty good sample size there on Rasheed Rice. Now, to your point, the question is, with other playmakers in the fold, does he continue to get all the design and schemed up looks because a ton of his work? came from those mm -hmm. he didn't have to worry about going out and winning on his own quite as much last season because so much was designed so if they ask him to do more of that and then they give some of those screens like you mentioned to xavier worthy which was really one of those profiles whenever i studied him in the supermodel that showed he can do that work behind the line of scrimmage but he can also beat you over the top also an underrated receiver in the intermediate ranges of the field despite being small pretty good contested ball player not that that's the situation you want to put him in all the time but I do think there's a chance that Rasheed Rice loses some of those scheme looks to other guys that, you know, the, the Chiefs are going to be trying to figure out how do they get them the ball as well. So I think there's a little bit of risk here with Rasheed Rice based on his profile, but I definitely put him as the top guy in the pecking order. The question is, you know, if you're thinking about drafting Rasheed Rice, you know, how much do you want to put into the fact or how much how do you want to handle the suspension? Ian, I'm with you. I'm thinking four to six games is how I'm looking at it. So I'm fine taking him as a late wide receiver three, knowing that once I do get to put him into my lineup, that I can treat him more like a wide receiver two, potentially a wide receiver one, which is what we all are hoping for. Um, you just have to plan when you draft for she rice. If you draft for she rice as your third wide receiver, some people are like, no, I can't take him as my third wide receiver because that's a starter on my team. Yeah. No, you can still do it. You just know that you need to turn around and take someone like a Deontay Johnson you know, maybe a little bit earlier than ADP in your league so that you have someone you can plug in early. And then once Rasheed Rice is back, then you can let him take over a starting role. So there's still ways that you can that you can craft your roster. I'm with you in terms of I do think Rice could unlock a bigger portion of his game. But yeah, at least the way he was used last year, man, certainly was far more as his check down low ADOC guy. Yeah. 4.9 yard average target depth. He was the only wide receiver with at least 50 targets to be under that five yard mark. So hey, made the most of it. Was electric after the catch. And at the end of the day, averaged the seventh most yards per route run of any rookie wide receiver over the past 10 years. So once he is back, things should be once again, you know, looking good. Just, uh, yeah, guys. Guys, please, all NFL players, don't uh, you know? Don't freaking drive if you're not in a position to do so. That's the you know moral hmm. of the story here. But yeah, guys, again, we've already been referencing some really cool ADP data. I see Dwayne tweeting some new cool utilization stuff every single day. It seems like, and guess what? You can find all that stuff for yourself over at FantasyLife.com with our new found premium package, Fantasy Life Plus. Let's hear more about that from the one, the only Matthew Berry. We'll be right back after this quick word. You know, when I started Fantasy Life, I had one mission in mind, really just one fantasy football and sports betting for all and what started out as just a newsletter has now grown into a full-fledged media company and here i am to tell you we're ready to evolve yet again i'm introducing fantasy life plus it's a premium product built upon a suite of fantasy and sports betting tools to take your game to the next level i i know i hear you really barry a premium product okay i understand but get this our mission has not changed right our newsletter will forever remain free. All of our expert analysis, free. And we will still provide sets of fantasy football rankings for free. Everything you need to be a great fantasy football manager, you will still be able to do for free at fantasylife.com. But hey, if you really want to level up, then Fantasy Life Plus is for you. Fantasy Life Plus will introduce new tools like our draft champion, customizable rankings, site-wide league sync integration, player prop models, game models, DFS pick'em builders, and so, so, so much more. Seriously, just check it out. Go to fantasylife.com to learn more. And as always, may your trades never be vetoed, may your flex plays always work out, and may your Monday Night Miracles always come through. 
Thank you, Matthew. Now, Dwayne, with as is the case with a lot of good teams, we do have, you know, the head coach not losing his job. And accordingly, Andy Reid is back for season 12. Matt Nagy still at offensive coordinator for his second straight year. 66.7% pass play rate in neutral situations last year. That was second. Now, offensive line, you know, reigning 18th ranked group wasn't incredible. They do return four or five starters. But, you know, based on the wide receiver additions, I think we see a, you know, just further downfield emphasis i don't think mahomes is going to be dead last in the league in average target depth again but otherwise Dwayne, probably expecting you know more of the same here yeah i mean when you look at the chiefs though andy reed is a mastermind <laughs> dialing up all the cheat codes um if you look at the percentage of plays where you've got motion at the snap you know he's ranked second if you look at play action it's high if you look at screen plays he ranks second over the last three seasons with seven percent of dropbacks coming in screen you know uh, resulting in a screen play so you have to defend every square inch of the field. And whenever you put a guy like, like you know, Andy Reid together with Patrick Mahomes and then you give them these new playmakers, it's just going to be a nightmare, you know, for defenses. If they can keep all of these guys healthy and they all find their roles, you put it all together with Mahomes and Andy Reid, man, the sky is obviously, we already know the sky's the limit with the Chiefs. I mean, I don't even need to tell you guys that. <laughs> But it really is a situation where we could see Patrick Mahomes boom back to what we saw a couple of seasons ago. Obviously, defenses are trying are playing things a lot different, you know, and Mahomes and Josh Allen, they're part of the reason for that. They don't want to give up these big plays. But again, Andy Reid is one of these guys that's shown in. And we saw it with Rasheed Rice as well last year. Like he can figure out ways to still make his offense work. And then once you start to try to take those things away, the difference this year is I actually think they have the potential weapons on the outside to make you pay when you go to try to stop the screen game. You want to take away the underneath stuff to Rasheed Rice. You want to just try to focus on taking away Travis Kelsey. You might start you know, seeing more shots down the field. We saw it last year in the playoffs. Remember when the MVS just couldn't quite come up with that one shot down the field? And you're just like, oh, my God. Like, they finally got the, they finally got the cover one they're looking for. Mahomes has been waiting for it all game. Just couldn't come up with the play. I think you're going to have a much better chance with these wide receivers to take advantage of those sort of mismatches whenever opposing defenses are finally like, okay, fine. We're not giving you these little gimmicky plays. We're going to take them away. Well, that's when Mahomes is going to hit you deep. To be fair to MVS, he did finally make the play, you know, to help seal that victory over the Ravens. But yeah, talk about a guy who's really, you know, MVS and who's the other one at this point? MVS and Demarcus Robinson, just one sick quarterback after another. The anti DJ Moore's and Terry McLaurin, obviously MVS now in Buffalo. So yeah, it's it's amazing to think about what this Chiefs team could have been if they hadn't whiffed so badly on some of these big free agency deals. I mean, for them to give Sammy Watkins the amount of money they did back in the day, MVS got a nice chunk of cash. I know Chiefs fans, they made some clutch plays in the playoffs, but if either of those guys actually had emerged as like the legit higher end wide receiver two, they're being paid to Lord have mercy on some of these defenses. So yeah, I guess my only, you know, critique, which isn't even a critique because obviously Andy Reid knows he'll forget more about football than I will ever know even close in my life. But yeah, man, can they just chill the hell out when they get inside the 10 yard line, Dwayne? I mean, it's just <laughs> underhand passes, these double reverses. They're doing ring around a rosy out there. It's a fun time, but I don't know. Can we spam one of those plays at midfield, not at the freaking doorstep? Nothing more frustrating for fantasy managers to deal with. But you know what, guys? That's okay because sometimes when life is hard and you have a hard day, it's time to go ahead and just get yourself a nice cold Mike's Hard Lemonade. That's right. Ask yourself this. Was your day hard enough? Slow drafts that won't end. Getting sniped in drafts rooms. Lopsided trade offers. That one league mate that is always so extra. We know living the fantasy life is hard and hard days deserve a hard lemonade. To find a Mike's near you, go to www.mikeshard.com. All right, Dwayne, accordingly, the Super Bowl champions have a pretty lofty win total, 11 and a half, minus 120 lean on the over. So these are the AFC West favorites sitting pretty at minus 250. And, you know, at the risk of being, you know, too much of a victim of the moment, I do tend to think they will once again be clearing this number. So I'm taking the over. I mean, look, this this team just does not really bust at this point, Dwayne. I mean, I'm not saying that 2024 can't be different or anything, but we start just going back through the years. Last year, 11 wins. Before that, 14, 12, 14, 12, 12, 10, 12, 11. Again, we got to get over the 11 and a half number. That's not easy, and I understand they didn't get it last year. But, you know, defense still looks fantastic. They got the new wide receiver uh, weapons. I think this will be a far more complete team than we saw last year. And accordingly, give me the over. Yeah, I'll take I'll take them at 11 and a half. I, I feel like, you know, with these weapons, it's a much improved offense. We've got Andrew Reid. We've got Patrick Mahomes. And man, like the Raiders, 
Okay. Like I, they don't have a quarterback that I trust. Uh, the Broncos, we have no clue what they have at quarterback. The Chargers lost many of their weapons. Will Jim Harbaugh maybe bring that winning, you know, formula there that he's had in so many other places? You know, I think there's a good chance of that, you know, with Justin Herbert as their quarterback. So they could be a tougher out, but I mean, the Chiefs are just, uh, they're just a better roster. So for me right now, I think the Chiefs are a team that I like over 11 and a half, which is weird. That's such a high number. It's not something you would normally want to bet. I know it's minus 120 to take it, but I do. It's not like bad it. though. I mean, we've yeah. seen some of these that are like minus 150 yes. or higher. So yeah. minus 120, not too worried about. But whether you guys agree or disagree, we invite you to go ahead and take that action over to our friends at DraftKings Sportsbook. We have partnered with DraftKings Sportsbook. And right now, all new customers who bet just $5 will get $150 back in bonus bets instantly. Download DraftKings app now and sign up using our promo code FANCYLIFE to, again, bet just $5 on anything and then receive that $150 back in bonus bets instantly. If sports betting is not yet available, available in your state, don't worry. DraftKings is a one-stop shop for all things daily fantasy where you can join in on all the fun and have a shot to win cash prizes download DraftKings sportsbook app now again new customers use our promo code fancy life and bet just five dollars on any wager and get 150 dollars in bonus bets back promo code fantasy life the crown is yours last situation we still need to talk about is this backfield RB1 Isaiah Pacheco and Dwayne is one of these situations where when you just start kind of looking at the projected volume guys who we need to say okay what running backs have the volume are in a really good offense and have shown some level of just not sucking at football themselves Pacheco's checking all those boxes fairly easily now I'm not calling the man the next Christian McCaffrey or Brees Hall out here but you know what he's been 14th and 9th in rushing yards over expected per carry you look at all of his advanced metrics and he's also at least above average in the majority of them i mean i know the guy runs like the ground is like his worst enemy in the world but it's effective man and he can catch the ball he's caught 75 of 82 career targets man that's the highest catch rate of any freaking player over these past two seasons so even if he's not you know Brees or cmc Dwayne, we get a discount accordingly and i think that makes him a pretty freaking great early round pick yeah and i think he ran really pure this offseason the yeah. Chiefs didn't do anything at running back. The next guy on the roster is going to be Clyde Edwards Alaire again, who we have all seen for long enough to know that he is not the answer. So no Jarek McKinnon. I, I, this this feels good to me. Last year, whenever Pacheco finally took over the lead role, and part of it was due to some injuries to McKinnon and CEH that actually opened that opportunity up for him. But he continued to seize it even into the playoffs once McKinnon came back from IR. But from week nine through the Super Bowl, he averaged 17.4 fantasy points Ooh. per game. So 15 fantasy points per game is what you need to be a running back one over the last three seasons. So Pacheco was well above that. And if we look at this opportunity, you know, in an offense with the Chiefs where we know there's going to be a lot of points scored, I really do like it. To your point, I would like it if maybe we had a little bit less of the Andy, Andy Reid shenanigans <laughs> down around the goal line. But it's hard to fall Andy Reid like in their players because they end up scoring, right? right. They end up scoring anyway. But if they would commit a little bit more to the run inside the five-yard line with a guy that runs so angry, like you mentioned, like Pacheco, who I think can get the job done, man, that would open up a ceiling that we're probably not considering with where he's going in drafts. Look, this is a former round seven pick, so there's always some shakiness with it. But again, there's just not anything on the roster to really scare me. I think you could honestly look at Isaiah Pacheco and make an argument, Ian, that he's an arbitrage play on Kyron Williams. Plays yeah. in a really good offense, probably going to have similar – Outlooks as far as how often they rush the ball. I give a slight edge to the Rams. Probably going to have a little bit more yards rushing per game because the Chiefs are so pass heavy. But, man, I mean, two later round guys. We know there's some questions. That doesn't always work out. But with me, with Pacheco, at least he doesn't have to worry about a Blake Corum. They didn't add anything like yep. that. So I, I like Pacheco at his price. And I think there is an opportunity for him to be more like a 19 to 20 fantasy point per game player if the Chiefs run the ball just a little bit more inside the five-yard line. And they did move that way. I mean, in 2022, it was at 65% pass play rate inside the five, which was easily the league high. And it actually went down to 52.6% last year. Now, that was still the sixth highest mark in the league, which is hilarious that they had yeah. that big of a drop off and still, again, uh, you know, ranking towards the top. But yeah, again, you know, very, very high uh, projected upside potentially for Isaiah Pacheco. Sadly, Dwayne, he's not as cheap, you know, over at ESPN and Yahoo, just giving, you know, the redraft folks a lot of flowers today with some of these prices. 
price points. But he is going, you know, more towards the end of round two as opposed to round three, round four. Maybe that you can see him in some higher stakes and underdog leagues. So I'm with you on considering him more of an arbitrage play versus Kyron Williams. But when he is going, you know, pretty much right next yeah. to him, maybe six picks. I'm not taking letter. him at those spots. No. So it's a good call out by you. I'm taking one of the elite wide receivers. Just wide receivers, like we actually know – we have a better idea of who the good players are. Okay. Mm-hmm. Like the, the talent tells us that with running backs, it can like the predictive nature of running back points year over year, all their efficiency things, every, everything we look at to try to figure out who's good and not good. Like it isn't near as strong as what we have for wide receivers. So, uh, and also the injury factor, um, there's just a lot of things going on there. So yeah, I'm with you. I'm going with a wide receiver most likely, you know, in that range of the draft, if that's where I've got to take Pacheco. Pacheco versus Marvin Harrison jr. Marvin Harrison Jr. Pacheco versus Chris Olave. Chris Olave. Yeah, I think so too. If you see those guys sliding up and then we standard get more- league. <laughs> I'll go yes. Pacheco. But That's you know, you're playing a half PPR or full PPR, especially if it's three wide receiver. Like yeah. there's just no way I'm taking Pacheco there. Once we get into Michael Pittman, Stefan Diggs, Mike Evans, I can start to wrap my mind around it. But yeah, guys, I mean, Drake London is going freaking, you know, rounds after Pacheco right now, which I just cannot, you know, fully get behind. Yeah, so I can't either. Pacheco versus Derrick Henry versus Kyron Williams. I think there's an argument if you want to go ahead and actually favor Pacheco over them. I think that is the tier he's in, Dwayne. And accordingly, when you have this tier, give me the wide receivers I can't get later. And I will, you know, if I can't get Pacheco and I can get ETN instead the next round, I am not going to be crying about that at all. So good stuff there. Final quick note on this backfield. It's ugly, Dwayne, but Clyde edwards helaire is literally free at the end of drafts. Yeah. And I know, guys, when we had to draft him as a first rounder a couple of years ago, it didn't exactly work out great fantasy land but look what happened last year two games without isaiah pacheco in action we actually saw ceh dominate snaps carries and even win targets over Jarek mckinnon who is now a free agent I mean, during those two weeks, CEH was the RB34 and the RB9. Jarek ripped off RB21 and RB19 finishes. So, no, I don't think we're getting this locked-in top 10 running back if Pacheco goes down in CEH. But he is someone that I think is going to vie for top 20, dare I say top 15 weekly status just based on the volume in this Chiefs offense. So, I know we got the rugby, you know, turned NFLer Luis Reese Zamet in there. But based on what we've heard so far out of camp, it does sound like he's going to be more restricted to special teams early on so Dwayne like look get to the last round of the draft and show me a running back that doesn't suck okay it's between CEH like Alexander Madison and Tank Bigsby those are the options and when you're looking at that man just give me the one in the Chiefs offense yeah I'm with you I mean look I get it CEH has been really gross (laughs) I mean he's not lived up to what we hoped that he would be but in this offense if there's any moment in the season where he is out there and Pacheco is not available for the game I mean, he's going to be a borderline running back one. That's just the way it works. Volume is king, and there's really nothing else they've done. We'll see what they do through training camp. We'll see if another name emerges. It'll be something to keep track of because CEH has certainly not done himself any favors and really any of the marks that we look at to determine who is a talented running back versus who is not. But as of right now, today, I'm with you. I think last round pick, great. Obviously, you're not doing it you know, in a home league kind of thing, but if you're in a deeper league, I think he's a great last round pick. We gotta be careful about this Chiefs training camp, though. Again, kudos to everyone that yeah, followed the tea leaves of Puka Nakua, but my God, the Justin Ross hype was crazy. Was it the Nerick Prince? Was that the running back? But the year before, it was the Pacheco hype. So it's like you know, True. Th- this stuff is so hit or miss. No matter what camp <laughs> you talk about. Oh man, but we will you know continue to watch the film, read the reports, and hopefully get better. It takes us to the end of our team preview, where we go ahead and comp every single team to a TV or movie character. And Dwayne, I am gonna go with Forrest Gump here, like just like Patrick Mahomes just keeps on winning in every facet of life, no matter what they are really even trying to do. I mean, hell, they both even end up marrying their high school sweetheart. And yeah, they just keep on freaking winning. So as long as you have Forrest Gump involved and as long as you have Patrick Mahomes involved, certainly seems like you're going to be in a pretty good position to win football games or win in whatever the hell's, hell else you're doing. Ping pong, you know, just a shrimp business, anything, and they will accomplish it. So what say you, Mr. McFarland? Man, you know, I'm going to go, I'm just going to go with Patrick Mahomes and Superman. Like, because like if, <laughs> if we had to give any one player, like the best superhero in all of the league, like it has to be Patrick Mahomes yeah. because he just overcomes anything. It doesn't, you know, if you want to go with Homelander from the boys, you can, I just don't, you know, that's kind of mean spirited. <laughs> so I went with Superman, a more wholesome, you know, guy that people can probably get their heads slightly, around. But slightly. Like, uh, 
But Homelander is a great example too. Doesn't matter, you know, what surrounding cast is around him. Like some of these heroes that they put around him, you're like, is this even really a hero? And it doesn't matter. Like Homelander, like he's still the dude. Like he can beat anyone else, and that's just Patrick Mahomes. And especially when you put him with Andy Reid. So I don't know. Like who would we comp Andy Reid to? You know, I told you before the show I hadn't thought of one really for the Chiefs, so that was on the fly. I was actually just going to go with look. It's the new Patriots. Yeah. It's, it's you know, so if I had to go with something, it would be the video game Madden version of Patriots that you used to get, that I used to get to play with. That had Randy Moss, Wes Welker, Dante Stallworth running a drag route. Just not fair, but like that '98 speed back in the day. Um, who needed a running back on that team? Didn't even, Lawrence Maroney never touched the ball. Um, so it's 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 the new Patriots, like Andy Reid and Patrick Mahomes together, surrounding cast, supporting cast can come and go. Like those two when they're together, it's just so tough to stop. I like the idea, though, of, you know, morally correct Homelander for Patrick Mahomes, because I feel yeah. like if he went out there and, you know, lasered someone in half, like at a Chiefs tailgate, they probably start cheering Patrick they Mahomes, too, man. I mean, look at all the Super Bowls. <laughs> like that guy deserved won. it. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So, all right, everyone, that's going to wrap up this edition of the Fantasy Life Show. Appreciate you guys tuning in. As always, you can find team previews for all 32 squads, exactly where you're listening to us right now. Written forms on FantasyLife.com. Dwayne's fantastic content utilization tools, projections, all that goodness. Again, fantasylife.com. And don't be, don't be, uh, you know, afraid, not afraid. You know, no one's afraid here. But yeah, Fancy Life Plus really isn't all that expensive. Less than a Chipotle burrito, not even with double meter guac per month. So, hey, we got the content. We'll keep on trying to help you guys win your leagues. Even if you don't want to pay a single dime, I get it in this economy. But again, if you want to try to take that next step up, we do believe we have the tools to help you make that happen. So appreciate you again for listening. For Dwayne, for producer Matt, I'm Ian. This has been the Fancy Life Show. And until next time, take care, everybody. <laughs>